Hi, and in this video we're going to take a look at the new artifact weapons coming in Legion and what you need to know about them. This video is not based on any class or spec in particular, but I do have specific videos covering the Havoc Demon Hunter and Retribution Paladin. You can find these by clicking the link to the playlist for guides on those specs. So when you open up your weapon by right clicking on it in your character sheet or bag, there are two main areas of interest to begin with. The first are three icons at the top, with one locked out for now. These are your relic slots. You can get relics from quest rewards, dungeons or raid bosses, uh, crafting, sometimes bind on equip relics from random drops. There are different types of relics and you need the right type to be able to slot it into your weapon. The types are specific to different specs as well, not classes. For example, the new Demon Hunter class has two specs, Havoc and Vengeance. Havoc artifacts have two fell slots and a shadow. Vengeance, on the other hand, has one fell, one iron and one arcane. This means that only fell relics could be used in either weapon. Many classes will have no comparison between their different specs. In other words, there won't be a relic that they can use for two of their specs at all. So you have to be very, very careful about which ones you get. Now this is important because you may be trying to develop more than one artifact at a time. If you're running with a spec that can use fell or shadow relics, then those are the only ones you can get from quest rewards or bosses on personal loot. If you get a relic and it's not an upgrade for your main weapon, you won't be able to simply slot it into another weapon unless it happens to accept that same type of relic. In many cases this won't be possible. So you want to run with different loot specialisations if you're running a dungeon as one spec but want relics for another. So what are relics for? They are what determines the item level of our weapon. In addition, they also have a trait assigned to them. This will increase the rank of that particular trait on your artifact by one. Note that this allows the rank to go higher than would normally seem possible. As can be seen here on my Havoc Demon Hunter artifact, you can place up to three points in Critical Chaos, but I have four. This is because I've placed the maximum number of three points into it, and I also have a relic with that same trait. Now although some traits are more desirable than others, and indeed some may be completely useless for your chosen form of endgame, the item level of the relic is of the utmost importance. Better to slot in a relic with a high item level, even if the trait is weak. The only time you would seriously consider the trait is if you have a choice between two relics of the same item level, or maybe a negligible difference of one or two perhaps. Finally, in order to be able to unlock your third relic slot, you need to complete your order hall campaign. This may take a few weeks, depending on how quickly you want to rush through this. So after relics come traits, and these are the real meat of this new style of weapon. When you first obtain your artifact, you will go to your order hall to unlock it. This grants you a unique type of trait, which for most specs will give you a new ability. It's bordered with a nice, plain, clear gold circle. For some specs, it is a passive ability instead. After that, you'll be made to unlock one trait, which is predetermined and then you get a choice of direction. In order to be able to spend points on your traits, you will need to acquire artifact power. You get this by consuming objects from treasure chests, quest rewards, dungeon bosses, etc. Be very careful here, as when you consume these items, the artifact power is assigned to the weapon you have equipped. Sometimes you want to spend it on a different weapon instead. In this case, you should change specs to ensure that you have the right one equipped before consuming the items. I find it helpful to just save them up and consume them when I make my visits back to the order hall. There's no need to consume artifact power items as soon as you collect them. As you acquire enough artifact power, you'll be able to use it to spend points on your weapon. You can only do this in your order hall, at the altar or similar structure. Each time you spend a point on your artifact weapon, it will cost you more to spend the next one. For the first 13, the increase goes up incrementally. However, after this point, the cost rises exponentially. At first, it looks like it'll be an impossible job to complete the artifact, but there is a mechanic to help out with this. In your order hall, you will produce research notes that increase the amount of artifact power you gain. More about this in the order hall video coming soon, but just bear in mind that this doesn't mean there's any advantage in storing the artifact power items. Their value is determined at the point you acquire them, and will not change just because you get some research notes while they're in your backpack. The purpose of this mechanic is to allow people who either can't or don't want to play the game for excessive periods of time to not be too far behind in their artifact progress. However, it should be noted that there will come a time when the rate at which you spend the points becomes increasingly slow. 
Most traits simply increase the output of your abilities by a percentage or increase crit rate or perhaps reduce the cooldowns on some abilities. Because of this, the relative power of your different abilities can change as you spend points in your weapon. Indeed, this could affect your decision making and have a tangible effect on your gameplay when comparing how you'd behave with artifacts in different stages of development. Some of the traits only allow one point to be spent on them, but some need up to three. You're not simply allowed to allocate points wherever you please, you can only do so on traits that form a direct line through already completed traits back to your first. In addition, you have to completely fill up a trait before being allowed to move on. This means that you can't just spend points on the best traits first and work your way to the worst. You need to carefully consider your path. If you want to YOLO this, then fair enough and have fun. However, if you want to develop your artifact efficiently, you should seek out experts in your spec for advice. Changing your mind later on is not advisable, although you can reset the points on your artifact. It costs an amount of artifact power equal to the cost of getting the next trait. This means that after a week or two, it might well take an entire week's worth of farming artifact power to be able to afford to do this. Much better to get the path fixed in your head before you start. There are three major traits at various points around the artifact trait tree. These usually provide large bonuses to key abilities. They are marked out by having an elite gold dragon motif around them. Some are better than others of course and your chosen path is likely to take into account which major traits you want to obtain and in which order. Once you have spent the maximum number of points in each trait, your artifact is technically complete. Note that even for hardcore players this will still take a few months. It will take longer for people playing a character more casually though. Remember the research notes will provide some catch up however. Now at this point you still have the option to spend points. You can spend up to 20 more points on the weapon which gives you a flat increase to output. For DPS, each point spent in this way increases your damage by 5%. For tanks, you increase your health, and for healers, you increase your healing dawn, although for disciplined priests, uh, it's also a damage increase. Now that's the trivial stuff out of the way, it's time to talk of more serious matters. Obviously, with each spec getting a specific weapon set to use all expansion, there will be an issue of everyone looking the same. Now there are options here. The first is that you are free to transmog artifacts as you would for a normal weapon. This is certainly something I'll be doing on some characters because I think some artifacts look spectacular and others look like I designed them. But let's say you really like the look of your artifact but don't want it looking the same as everyone else. There are skins which can be obtained. When you access your weapon in the order hall uh, you can see four distinct skins with four colour versions of each for a total of 16. You need achievements to unlock these and some of them are very difficult which most players will never achieve. Some of them involve accessing very high level Mythic Plus dungeons or PvP accomplishments for example. However this is not the end of it. There are also what are termed hidden skins. The way to obtain these is not completely fully understood for all specs as of yet. However it does mean that the dedicated few will have access to a number of variations on a theme for their artifact. So hopefully that brings you up to speed with what you need to know about artifacts. Other videos I have out or coming out soon around the same theme include my Essentials Legion guides for Havoc Demon Hunter and Retribution Paladin, as well as specific Ashbringer guides. You might also check out my coming soon video on order halls. If the information you need isn't there, then make sure you join the Discord channel for your chosen spec, the details of which can usually be found on spec forums on a site such as MMO Champion. So as always, I hope you found this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. And until next time, I'll see you later.